We have Happy Valley welcoming in the Buckeyes. We've got the Big House welcoming in the Ducks. And we've got nothing but violence in Iowa City. Big Ten Breakfast is now served. Welcome back to Big Ten Breakfast, the Big Ten preview show. That's part preview show, but also part Yelp review. And today, Dan, we have the distinct pleasure of visiting the Bluebird Cafe in Iowa City. You have sent me this menu. I've been eyeing it up for the last hour or so. I have my menu item ready and I'm ready to talk some Big Ten football. It's a big week in week 10. I got a bunch of big matchups that I think are going to determine the course of things over the next month or so. How we things do. shake out moving into the postseason. I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's do it. This is as we enter into November, recording this on Halloween. We're not doing a, a spooky special, but maybe it turns into a spooky weekend given some of these matchups. I want to talk spice. You go to a diner, you go to a cafe like Bluebird Cafe in Iowa City, and you are bound to see, I don't know if it's Tabasco, I don't know if it's Cholula, I don't know if it's a house-made hot sauce, but people love doing up their hash browns, they love doing up their eggs, whatever you have, a breakfast sandwich, some people just like that spice. Some people just like to watch the world or their intestines burn, Ty. And we are leaning into that, and we are leaning into that via upsets. Week 10, Big 10 upsets. I want to hear about the spice level. I want to hear about how worried people should be Maybe it's the morning after, Ty, that yeah. like, did that just happen? Did I really douse that that ham, egg, and cheese with that much hot sauce? I am not feeling good about those decisions. Mm -hmm. Let's start here. It's not a huge line with Ohio State, Penn State, but Penn State, an underdog at home. Do you see this as a likely upset? Do you think it's, I mean, I guess the spice here would be Penn State demolishing Ohio State. Right. I don't what see that happening. Okay. For sure. well, I'm just, I don't know what you see happening. But what level of heat do you have on the potential for a Penn State upset? I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd put this at about a 7 or an 8. Ooh, okay. I think there is considerable heat on this matchup with some caveats. The most notable of which is Drew Aller. Drew Aller, at the time of recording this, was going through ball security drills this week. Oh. I saw some footage with him. He was not limping at all. It seems oh, as okay. if he will be good to go. So that's a good thing for Penn State. I think despite the fact that Bo Perbula was very successful a week ago, and I still think we will see Bo Perbula in spots in this game as we have all year, yeah. it's Drew Aller's offense. And they're going to need Drew Aller to try and stretch this field a little bit in order to put some points on the board. If you're going to beat Ohio State, I think you got to get the 30 points. I'm not certain Penn State can do that, but I do think they're a little bit more of a downfield team than many give them credit for. We know that they've got the rushing attack as well. Can they cover Ohio State's receivers? Like They're just a boatload of questions here, but I think just given the fact that this is one of the better Penn State teams in recent memory, given the fact that they are at home, given the fact that the stakes are so high, given the fact that both of the pregame shows are going to be in State College this weekend, it seems to me like the vibes are really strong in state college. Also, there is a ton of pressure on Ryan day to not lose this game. True. You lose this game. Suddenly you're in a very precarious spot, not just within the big 10, but within the national playoff conversation, which look, Ohio state loaded up this postseason, this off season to try and get to that playoff game and maybe make a run at this thing. So Penn state's going to be in this position essentially with nothing to lose. You could lose a game and still find your way into the playoff. They can let it all hang out. I like their chances to keep this one close. Significant spice level. Not sure it happens, but definitely a game for us to watch. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm more 6-7 than 7-8. Like somewhere in that, like a 6.2 in terms of spice level. There's, there's a reason why this line is as low as it is. Obviously, Penn State is very good. They're the number three team in the country. I just want to see some heat on this Penn State offense, especially yeah. in the first half. That's the problem to me is... Teams that are pulling off upsets, and this is barely an upset, but against an excellent Ohio State team, they need to swarm and harass and overwhelm this Ohio State patchwork offensive line. If they're able to do that, then you get short Ohio State drives, a bunch of punts, an arrhythmic Ohio State offense, maybe a receiver two getting frustrated that they're not seeing the ball, that the play calling isn't going their way. So I think there's a good amount of heat on Penn State. I just wish it weren't Penn State, right? I wish it weren't James Franklin's track record yeah. involved 
in these huge games, home, away, whatever, that for some reason, they're just not able to muster that heat in these types of matchups. They lose by a lot of points or they don't score any point. Like it's just, that's the problem to me that I wish I had a little bit of proof that Ohio state could bring the Scoville units or Penn state could bring the Scoville units in a matchup like this. Yeah. I I think it's totally fair. I mean, the matchup that I'm going to watch the most is going to be Penn state's defensive line against that Ohio state offensive line. If they can get in there, if they can affect Will Howard's rhythm, obviously we know that Ohio state's got, an incredible tandem of wide receivers, a trio of wide receivers that they can lean on at any point in the game. They're very talented in the backfield as well. They have a million different ways that they can beat you, but Penn State's going to need to find a way to try and upset that rhythm and take Will Howard out of whatever comfort zone he finds himself in or has found himself in the previous nine weeks of the season. The good news, by the way, for Ryan Day and James Franklin is neither Oregon nor Jim Harbaugh are involved in any... Anything that has to do with this game today. Right. So those are those are some of the teams. Those are the teams that have really disturbed those records and driven those narratives. So that's good news. On the topic of Jim Harbaugh, his old team is hosting Oregon as deep dogs Very deep. here. 14, 14 and a half points. It's not crazy to say that Michigan in the big house in a big game with strong defensive players on all three levels could do something here. That's not crazy. But given how Michigan's performed this year, what level of heat do you have on Michigan pulling this one off at home on CBS in front of a bajillion maize and blue fans? What do you think? I mean, do something in your preamble there is doing some heavy lifting, if I'm being honest yeah. with you. Mm-hmm. It is. Two? I'm at a two. Okay. This is like the second round of wings that Sean Evan feeds you on hot ones. Just yeah. a little bit to kind of get you feeling the spice, but not necessarily burning your face off. Right. I like Michigan in this spot relative to the point spread. That is how I am thinking about this game. I am thinking of it with that 14 or 14 and a half points in mind. I don't think they've got the offense to score with Oregon, even if their defense plays lights out and holds Oregon to something like 27 points. I just don't see it happening. I don't. I don't know where those points are coming from. I feel like the Michigan offense at this point is relatively telegraphed against a pretty good defense. Now, they did find, I think, a better balance of using their quarterbacks a week ago in what amounted to a really nice win against Michigan State. So maybe they have turned a corner. Maybe we will all be surprised on game day. I'm just not buying that that's a realistic possibility with respect to money lines and actual upsets. So for me, very low spice level here. I am anxious to see Oregon in a real hostile road environment though which is not right. something we have seen thus far this year but i think the de- a skillet if you a will skillet. Right? i think the defense yeah, will travel yeah. i think that their offense has now found a rhythm so i'm not overly concerned from the oregon standpoint that we're going to see any kind of groundbreaking upset okay fair enough yeah the the problem with picking michigan here to win outright as a, as a full upset it's not that it's impossible it's not that michigan is incapable fully as a program it's that at this point in the season in week 10 you would have liked to see an outburst right. at some point. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, they scored 44 against some Minnesota. Proof of it wasn't concept. happening every week. Some proof of concept, something some. to make us feel a little bit more comfortable that it's out there and they just need to find a way to get there more consistently. I'm with you. Yes, yeah, so that that tangy vinegar that you find in hot sauce. The What is it? The caps, capsaicin? Is that the word? Sure. I have no idea. I'm just throwing words out here. Right, that something that heat that you find in the seeds of peppers that like, oh, for a half there against U.S., it just hasn't happened. No. And it's not that I don't think I think they have good players on offense, especially at skill position, tight end, running back, whatever. A couple offensive linemen I think are strong to very strong. But it's just there hasn't been that outburst. Mm-hmm. There hasn't been that five along five alarm fire in the chest of Michigan this year on offense. So I it would have to be such a shocker. It would it, that we couldn't see it coming. So no, I, I don't see it. I have is it like a, a three and a half, four heat scale. That just because of the situation, just because Oregon on the road hasn't, you know, it's Oregon State, UCLA, Purdue, it's not the big house. I'd put it at three and a half, something like that. Let me give you another one, Ty. UCLA at Nebraska, okay? This is mere days after Nebraska was the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. And they were very nearly the hot sauce that took down the Ohio State palate in Columbus. But now UCLA as dogs, they've only beaten Rutgers in the Big Ten, I believe. Yes. Yeah. As dogs, 
six and a half, seven points, somewhere in there, five and a half, six, you know, single digit. What is UCLA's potential here? Five. Okay. Five. I, I'm i sort of torn on Nebraska at this point because I feel like on some level we all sort of bought into the hype. And what we yeah. have seen happen as of late is not necessarily disappointing results, but I think it has been more realistic results. It's a true freshman quarterback. It is still a team that is very much in rebuilding mode led by Matt Rule. They're better, definitely better this year than they were a year ago, but they're not bulletproof. And there are some warts with this team that they still need to resolve, especially right. on offense. It's just not there yet. So I don't think they're impervious to most of the teams on their schedule. And UCLA, I, I cannot put my finger on UCLA. Maybe you can help me do a better job of this. Sure. Because it feels to me like despite the fact that they have been somewhat disorganized and for sure underwhelming this season, there's still talent on this team. I agree. It still feels to me like more to the point that we were just making about proof of concept with Michigan. They, if they can get to that thing, whatever that is more consistently, maybe it's going to be a better season. I kind of feel that way about UCLA as well. I almost feel like we've seen a little bit more of that out of UCLA this year in spots this season. We just can't seemingly get back to that spot enough for them to have a more successful campaign. So I'm, I think there's a reasonable chance that they can win this game. I, I'm not like, throwing my hat too hard in the ring behind Nebraska or really anyone in this contest. I'm just sort of excited to see how it plays out. I have it as an 8.5 tie. Okay. I think there is a good chance UCLA is able to pull it off. I think there's a good amount of heat here. Situationally, Nebraska coming off of that near win, I guess, against Ohio State last week. UCLA right now, by the way, there's a ton of pressure on Nebraska. Look at the last four games on their schedule. It's UCLA, USC, Iowa, Wisconsin. No. Nebraska, one game out of bowl eligibility, yes? Yep. UCLA is kind of the whole thing. Now, Nebraska can beat any of those teams. They can. The surest thing to get to six is UCLA. Just get it out of the way now, right? I think there's a lot of pressure on Nebraska to win this game. I think they're going to play a little bit tight. UCLA kind of has nothing to lose. And how many, you mentioned how many points it probably takes to beat Ohio State. How many points does it take to beat Nebraska? 17? <sighs> 15? 20, yeah. 20? I mean, it doesn't take much. The threshold isn't crazy, and as much as UCLA has lost, close against Minnesota at home, played LSU to a draw at the half, and obviously went to Rutgers and took down. I mean, look, going to Rutgers and winning is not the biggest deal in the whole world, but we talk about the difficulty some of these teams have had going time zones. Yeah. I just think the best of UCLA is interesting, so if they can come up with their best in Lincoln in a nice situation, I got some heat there. All right. Yeah, I'm 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 really curious to see this game. I want to see how Nebraska responds because this is a, even though they lost, this is an obvious letdown spot for them because they were yes. close against the top five team at Ohio State. You win a game against Ohio State, you get the bowl eligibility by beating a team like Ohio State. I mean, suddenly fortunes have been reversed, vibes are at an all time high in Lincoln. To kind of come down from that now is um, especially in a game where you're up late. Right, yes. they were leading that game at one point in the fourth quarter. I don't know how will they respond. It'll tell us a lot about um, uh, a, a young team. Minnesota dogs, yes, against Illinois. Is that where we are right now? No, no. Excuse me. Minnesota's favored by three. So let's say Illinois as a home dog. Lot of spice here. Illinois has beaten interesting, decent teams. Was ranked in the top twenty last week. What do we think about Illinois as a home dog against Minnesota a week after Minnesota dropped nearly 50 against Maryland? I like Minnesota in this game. I think I do too, which is very scary. So I don't know. What does that put us on the spice level? Where Nine would you and a half? Nine? Yeah. I, I like Minnesota a lot in this game. I think it is a bad matchup for Illinois. Okay. I think Illinois' line is bad at protecting anyone behind it. Their rushing game has not really gotten off the ground in any super meaningful way. Luke Altmaier has had a good year in spite of the line, not because of it. Mm -hmm. And this is a Minnesota team that will blitz him. They will blitz Luke Altmaier. This is an Illinois defense that's going to try to blitz Max Brosmer. And I think their success in getting to Brosmer will, di will dictate ultimately the course of this football game. I'm just not buying it on the Illinois side. I have really haven't bought in all year to the Illini. I think it's a good campaign from Brett Bielema. I think there are definitely pieces of this team that have improved, but 
I like the circumstance for Minnesota. I really like the circumstance for Minnesota here. I like their team. I think they are playing, especially in light of last week, some of their best football of the season. Maybe they have turned this corner on offense because we saw it a week ago between Brosmer and the running game and the guys out wide, Daniel Jackson out wide. It seems like maybe there is something coming together here. So I, I want to be on that side of this equation. Okay, so th- that's a light upset potential, right? You could sure. see Illinois upsetting them, but you're at like a three or four, something like that. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I think I agree with you. And I, I di- the only point I disagree with is it's not, I don't not buy into Illinois because I actually think they've maximized what they are to the best of their ability. And there's a lot of teams who would love to have us say that about them. But Yes, Luke Altmaier has improved as a quarterback. The receivers have become really nice weapons. Zakari Franklin was a great addition, by and large. They have some playmakers on this defense. They just don't have the line play to fully buy into them as a second-tier Big Ten threat in this moment. Like, they're just, they're not in that spot. They went down like they did against Oregon last week for a reason, but... I don't hate them against Minnesota in this spot because that might have just been Minnesota's best offensive week last it's, week. Look, and we're overreacting a little bit. It's entirely possible. I, when I say I don't buy into Illinois, I don't buy into Illinois yeah. as like a top 20 team. Okay, fair enough. Okay, which I don't, which is not intended as any kind of slap in the face because I do think Brett Bielema has done a good job. And I totally yes. agree on the point that he has helped maximize talent on hand. But on some level, it is a Jimmy's and Joe's thing. On some level, you got to look at that line and you got to say they're not protecting the quarterback. They're not they're not enabling this rushing attack to be something more and that is going to cap this offense. Okay. So, this is one that we have disagreed on all week. We've got a road favorite in USC, mm. favored by two and a half. So, spice-wise, Washington getting two and a half points at home in the Pacific Northwest, arguably the greatest region of this country outside of the Great Midwest. <laughs> um what, where do you stand on the the heat involved with what it would take for Washington to, on their own turf, upset USC, who has done nothing except take those L's on the road this year? I think Illinois could pull the, or uh, Washington could pull the upset, excuse me. Okay. I absolutely think Washington could pull the upset. It's a two and a half point spread. So even Vegas is looking at that. I don't think it's going to take that much heat to okay. pull off the upset. I think there's a lot of heat on the upset potential here, though. So I put this one at like an eight. I went back and forth in this one too. You say we've disagreed, which is true. I've disagreed with me as Mm -hmm. well on this one. It's a lifestyle I lead, yeah. Ultimately, I'm on the USC side of this one. I'm on the USC side of this one. Um, Nice little neck crack win in their last game against Rutgers. Uh, Before that, obviously, the three straight losses against Maryland, Penn State, Minnesota. That has been kind of the talking point. I just feel like this is a good offense. And I think if Lincoln Riley can get beyond whatever passing ratios he's worked up on his little two by two slide rule that he's got with him yeah, on yeah, game the post day, it. Yeah. And just run the damn ball. If he can just run the damn ball, they're gonna win this game. You can run a Washington. It's not that complicated. I would like to see them run it more in this football game. I think if they do that, they win. Now, whether they will, that's kind of more an existential question about Lincoln Riley and his philosophy running this team, running this program. But um, I I think if they just stick to the basics, they should win this game, even given the fact that it's at Washington. I think Washington will be upset-minded to some extent here. Um, Never in my wildest dreams did I think we'd be talking about this matchup in Week 10 with two 4-4 and teams, right? which is true on both sides of it. I thought USC would be better than this. I didn't think Washington would be this good. So it's sort of a meeting of two ships that have been going in perhaps opposite directions here for the first half of the season. I I don't have, I have this as a very low ups, upset potential because I, if I'm going to say, I think this is going to be a close game. Why would, why would you say that, uh, that Lincoln Riley is going to be the one that figures it out. So no. um, very low upset potential means I don't even think it's an upset. I, I came into thinking it was going to be a Washington favor by one or two points kind of thing. So yes, yeah. in terms of this particular exercise, it's a 9.2. I think Washington's going to win this game. They're going to find a way to win this game, even though, on the same point, on a similar point, don't love Jed Fish in big decisions. Don't love this offense in big decisions and high leverage <laughs> moments, but at least they're playing at home. And it seems like each of USC's losses haven't aged well. Uh, the yeah. Minnesota one is fine, but the way they lost to Maryland was really bad. Like, it's just, it hasn't, the way they lost to Michigan hasn't aged well. 
I'm just not in on, for whatever reason, USC doesn't travel. So I think it's okay. like a 9.2 to me. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Speaking of 9.2, I am going to judge based solely on menu and pictures, the Bluebird Cafe in Iowa City as maybe a straight 10 review from me without actually consuming a calorie. I like the logo. The lo- it's a strong logo strong game. Logo, the- Logo's half the battle with some of these cafes, as you know. Yes. And um, whatever font they got working here, it just feels like it's a vibe. Yes. I'm big on the Bluebird eggs. I, I It was the first thing on the menu. I'm wearing the shirt here. You know, we're doing a breakfast show. That's true. I had to wear the shirt. Two eggs, hash browns, and toast. Your choice of smoked ham, pecan smoked bacon, Woo! or two house sausage patties. What you going with? I'm going to go pecan smoked bacon. I've never had pecan smoked bacon. Yeah. I need it crispy. It's got to be smoked and crispy in order for me to be into it. But it's the first thing on the menu probably for a reason. Right. Reasonably priced. Like the logo. Like the spot I'm in on the bluebird eggs, Dan. I'm going steak and eggs. And I'm not even generally a steak and eggs person here. But in the great Midwest, ahead of Iowa, Wisconsin, there's something about ordering something beefy, Ty. And I'm going to read this off to you. A six-ounce New York strip steak grilled your way. I I, I go medium. I'm not a medium rare person. That's okay. Uh, Two eggs. Over easy. Hash browns. Well done. You can make it Oscar with a crab cake, hollandaise, grilled asparagus, and a rustic hash. Wow. Here's what I'm doing. I'm staring my server in the eye. And I'm saying, Joanne, I'm going to need these steak and eggs Oscar. And I'm going to need it to the best of your ability. Because this is Iowa, Wisconsin weekend. And we are not taking any half measures. And no. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat this steak and eggs, Oscar, and I'm going to sleep for 72 to 78 hours. Because <laughs> I can only... <laughs> who is doing holiday? Who is doing any of this stuff together? Me. That's who. You offer it. I'm going to take you up on it. Bluebird Cafe. Count me in. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you one and all for tuning in to Big Ten Breakfast. Hopefully sufficient spice. There are other great games in the Big Ten this weekend. We don't there have time are. to talk about all of them. So whether you're into Indiana, Michigan State, Ooh, or Wisconsin, I got some, Iowa. Or I got, that's, that's an eight for me. Michigan State with us, an upset. Yeah. Even Northwestern Purdue. Let us know down in the comments who yes. you're picking, where the upset spice is in week 10. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you next week.